Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Bucket of Chum, the Shark Movie Podcast. As always, I am your host, Captain Steve, and this week we are talking about 2022's Bull Shark, directed by Brett Bentman. This was um, not my first time watching this movie, but the, I don't remember anything from it, or I didn't remember anything from it when I rewatched it. So it was kind of a fresh experience for me, or unfortunately, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, the letterbox plot synopsis is very simple. A hungry shark begins feeding on some unsuspecting lake goers in a small Texas town. Pretty straightforward to the point and basically what the movie is about. It has an average rating of 2.4 stars on Letterboxd. Poster expectations. This poster is basically a knockoff of Jaws. Like, I, I guess a lot of posters are really, but this one is simple. Like, it's just a shark underwater about to grab a woman swimming on the surface, but the shark does look pretty goddamn big. So I guess, you know what? I'm, I'm going to expect a big fucking shark. You give me one on the poster, I want it in the fucking movie. Other than that, I don't really know what else to expect from this. Like I said, I remember, or I remembered absolutely nothing about this movie, more or less, other than maybe a couple scenes here and there, and they weren't even really important ones. So it was, it was weird, but... Yeah, I assume it's going to be a CGI shark. Of course, maybe they'll mix in some practical work if we're lucky. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, let's hope this movie isn't a load of bull, and let's dive in. After a bunch of establishing shots, we see the shark going to eat a crawfish or something. I assume it's not a lobster because we're in a lake, so it can't be that, but I don't know. And as predicted, it's CGI. It's not great. I mean, they weren't afraid to show it right off the bat, like right in the very first scene. So we better see this shark a lot then, because if they're not afraid to hide anything, then they better show it consistently and constantly. Then we see Spencer Timms getting ready for work. Behind him on the wall in the bathroom, there's some piece of paper, but it was out of focus, so I couldn't really tell what it was supposed to be. I don't know if on like the DVD copy or Blu-ray, it's easier to see. I watched it on Tubi. Everything else was pretty clear for the most part, so I don't know what this piece of paper is supposed to be at this point. Like, I cannot tell what the fuck it is. After that, he's downstairs in his Texas Game Warden uniform, chugging vodka and putting a bunch in his coffee thermos as he gets ready to go for work. When he gets there, his assistant gives him shit for being late because it's, like, fucking afternoon and he was supposed to be there in the morning. And he's, like, she tells him he missed his meeting with the mayor um, but then he hears a call, or he hears that he missed a call from someone named Nolan, but his assistant, Rima, doesn't know what he wanted, other than it sounded important. She also mentions his sponsor called, so he's obviously been through AA, or is still going through AA, and has a sponsor, and he's still getting shit-faced. So he might need to talk to this guy. I don't know, just, just a word of advice, Spencer, maybe you should talk to your fucking sponsor, since you showed up to work with, like, a fucking 40 of vodka in your thermos. Rima even warns him that his problem is going to get so much worse before it gets better, or unless, like, he doesn't do something about it. So Spencer drives to Nolan's, and he shows Spencer a dead shark in the back of his truck, and apparently he went to some city with a bunch of friends, and they went fishing, and then he brought this thing back because he wants to sell it. That's his plan. He wants to sell the shark. I'm not sure, like, does he want to sell it for food to get, like, taxidermy? Like, I I don't know what the fucking plan is here. Maybe for food. I highly doubt it because it's been sitting in the back of his truck for 10 hours. So I highly doubt it's good to eat anymore. But anyways, Spencer tells Nolan he needs to get rid of this thing. So, like, just go back to the city. Go uh, leave it where you found it or where you caught it or whatever. Because if people see it by the lakeside, it's going to get people talking. They're going to, even though it's like, yeah, we know it's a lake, but people see a shark by water, they're going to freak out. So, yeah, fair enough. But also, as we know from countless other movies, bull sharks can survive in fresh water. Pretty sure we see this in Redwater, Shark Lake. Um, I feel like there's another one I'm forgetting, but yeah, pretty common storyline. Uh, Maybe they'll do something interesting with it in this movie, considering they named the movie after the shark. Maybe they'll do something fun with it. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Spencer comes home and finds his sponsor in his kitchen looking for the booze, 
And he takes Spencer's thermos and he smells it and he gives him shit for ruining almost 100 days sober and ru and getting uh, divorced or getting separated from Dottie, his wife, and his kid because they don't want an addict in their lives. But he doesn't really seem to be doing anything to improve this. So at this point, I'm kind of assuming the paper on the bathroom wall has something to do with his wife leaving him, maybe, and it's his motivation to get better. But it's clearly driving him to drink more, so maybe come up with a new strategy. Again, I'm not an expert. I'm just trying to come up with ideas because Spencer is kind of fucking stupid. Gary, the sponsor, tries to give him some words of advice and drama, drama, drama. Don't care. Later, they're on the dock just fishing and talking. And Spencer comments there's no fish biting. Oh, I wonder why. And they talk more about their alcoholism and it's cutting back and forth as Spencer drinks on the dock alone, I guess, later on that night. So, yeah, it's it was an interesting scene, actually, and it was kind of good. I just don't know why it was in this fucking movie. It just it didn't add anything to this movie for me. Back at Nolan's, he's dragging the shark into the lake in a wheelbarrow. So instead of bringing it back where he got it, He's just going to dump it in the lake, which is a worse idea. Like, if you're trying to hide this, just burn it. But nope, he just dumps it in and then walks away. And then next, we see a woman stripped down to her bikini. Finally, something good is happening in this movie. And she walks into the water and starts swimming. And from overhead, we see the shark following her. When we see these CGI shark shots from overhead, they actually don't look super terrible. Like, just from this movie, I was expecting a little bit worse. It doesn't look terrible so far. So, I don't know, maybe they're just doing, like, a slow build-up to, like, something bigger and awesome. Because, I mean, for most of Jaws, we don't see the shark for most of the movie. It's mostly just the tension of it being out there and a potential threat. And it's not till like, towards the end of the movie we actually see this thing in full form. But, I mean, then again, that was a practical effect, so, like, that was worth waiting for, but like, that was also due to the fact that there were issues with it throughout the whole movie, but it actually worked in its favor. But, I mean, we saw this shark already right in the opening credits, so, like, why not just show it more? Oh, probably because you can't afford to, maybe? You fucking blew your load in the opening credits, like, oh, and then that's all we're left with now. Oh, my God. So this bikini girl is dragged a bit and pulled under. She comes up, blood coming from her mouth, and her screams are gargled from, like, the blood and water. And as she's pulled under, we see a little bit of blood, and then, like, that's it. Again, it's still early. Maybe we're just building tension. Whatever. It's fine. It's gonna be fine. I'm sure this movie is going to be amazing. It'll be so good. The sheriff comes to Spencer's office the next day and tells they found a dead girl on the lake and what's left of her is at the coroner's office. And the sheriff tells Spencer he needs to figure it out and he hands him the autopsy report and a shark tooth he pulled out of the back of the body. The sheriff, of course, wants to keep it quiet because if word got out, there'd be no more tourists and, uh, like, fuck me, it's the fucking Jaws effect. Oh my god, we need the tourist dollar so we can't talk about the shark. Can we come up with something fucking different? Jesus Christ, I'm tired of it like this. Oh, the mayor wants to fucking cover it up because of reasons. Tourist dollars. Like, do they not realize it's going to get so much fucking worse if people continue to die? Oh god. Spencer says a shark in the lake doesn't make sense, but the sheriff then asks, like, well, how did a shark get in the lake then? And then we cut to Spencer yelling, Nolan, while he works away at home, and, like, asks Nolan what he did, and gives Nolan shit for dumping the shark in the lake, of course. But Nolan didn't want to make another trip to the city, so, I mean, it's pretty understandable, right? He didn't want to make another trip, so he just decided to dump it in the lake. It's fine. Again. Nolan, Spencer, both stupid. This is probably why they are friends. Spencer tells him the shark was pregnant, and that's what the bloating was. So we're supposed to believe this was a baby shark, do 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 do, baby shark, do 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 do. Ah, fuck it, I, I couldn't help it. 
But seriously, when we saw it, like it was way too big to be a baby. So I'm I was very confused about that. And yeah, the whole bloating thing. So when Spencer and Nolan um, were first talking about the shark, when Nolan was like, "Hey, look at the shark on the back of my fucking truck," uh, Spencer was like, "Oh yeah, it looks all bloated." And Nolan's like, "Oh, it's dead. It's been sitting back here for like fucking ten hours." And then he pokes it with a stick, and he's like, "See, dead. I poked it with a stick." And he uses this argument later on in the movie. I can't remember exactly where right now. I might in my notes here, but. He's like, oh, well, I poked it with a stick, so it's not really my fault. Oh, my God. Again, just like some other movies recently, I don't know if, like, he's supposed to be funny or if he's just legitimately fucking stupid. I don't know. Anyways, Spencer tells Nolan to tell it to the sheriff and walks away. And then we cut to some people jumping off a rock into the lake, and the shark swims by the front of the camera, and, and that's all we get of that. It's just like, hey, yeah, look, there's people in the water. Now there's a shark in the water. What's going to happen? We're just uh, going to make it up in our minds. This is like an imagination movie. We just get to take it wherever we want. How fun. That's what I watch movies for. So my own imagination can take over and make something else of it. Yeah, because I don't want to, you know, be enveloped in this world that they've created and characters or anything like that. No. I want to fucking just make it all up in my head as we go. Yeah, that's a fun time. What a great movie experience. In case you guys can't tell, I'm not particularly enjoying this fucking movie at this point. God damn, it's just fucking... It, I, it's still a little bit early on in the movie, so, you know, it could get better. It could get better. Spencer and Nolan are in the coroner's office, and the coroner says... Uh, she says there's multiple sharks. Because the girl's body, I assume they're talking about Bikini Girl that we saw get dragged under, had multiple bite marks with different bite radiuses. So essentially the mother and her babies are alive, is what's happening, I think. Be pretty fucking cool to stop talking about the sharks and actually fucking see them at some point. And then the coroner gives Spencer the number of a friend at an Oceanic Institute in case he has any questions later on. And so later we see Spencer on the phones dodging calls from reporters about this. So I guess word has started, uh, has started to get out, even though they're trying to keep this quiet. And he tells the mayor he's working on getting answers and that he needs the mayor to get the papers off his back so he can buy some time to get some work done and shit. Rima comes in and says, Nolan is on line one. So Spencer picks up and says, go fuck yourself, Nolan, and then just hangs up immediately. Probably one of the best parts of the movie. It was actually pretty funny. I was like, okay, that was good. I like that. You've, you've reeled me back in a little bit, movie. Not a lot, but a little bit. I'm kind of back with you now. He tells Rima he's going somewhere. He says the city name or whatever, and it's like seven hours away. I think it's the Oceanic Institute, since he was just talking to the guy on the phone. Spencer gets home, and he's got a bottle of vodka, and Dottie, his wife, is inside waiting for him. And she hands him divorce papers, and they argue over him seeing his kid, and she says uh, he's done nothing but shit on every opportunity that she's given him to, like, be a father to this kid, and it's all because of his drinking. Um, he apologizes, but says he's not signing those papers yet, and once this is all done, they'll get back together, and drama, 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 who fucking cares? Dottie leaves, then Spencer starts chugging the vodka, which is pretty much what I wanted to be doing at this fucking point in the movie, because nothing else was happening. I, oh my god. Get, getting fucking heated again. Somewhere out on the lake, some nerdy looking fisherman who talks like a hillbilly. His look, his demeanor, the way he talks are all fucking conflicting things. None of it makes any sense. It's like the costume department casting department and the actor all had different fucking ideas of what his character was supposed to be and uh it doesn't matter because he dies in two seconds anyways but still it was just i'm just like what is happening right now so anyways he's standing in the water fishing drinking a beer and he catches a fish on his line and then he's dragged into the water and he struggles a bit and that's all we see except for the cgi shark swimming away from some foggy cgi blood so again, we see pretty much nothing, and we see the fucking ass end of the shark. 
Like, you've already shown it to us. We know what it looks like, which I don't even think it looks like a bull shark, by the way. I'm not 100% sure. I didn't really look into it too much. And again, we only really see it in the beginning, so it's kind of hard to fucking tell. I'm not going to rewind it and pause and look at it, because fuck that. Anywho, Spencer meets with the guy from the National Aquarium, and the guy gives him some science talk on why bull sharks can survive in freshwater uh, and salt water. Something to do with their kidneys. Again, I do find that stuff sort of interesting, but I don't want to hear about it in this fucking movie, so like, I just tuned right the fuck out. And then the scientist dude reassures him that he has a shark problem, but with the cold weather coming and lack of food and no salt water, it should die off soon. And he asks the, the warden if he's closed off the lake, which clearly they didn't because tourism and monies and the economy Right? We can't close the lake because of those things. So, of course, we cut to some people water skiing on the lake, fishing, kayaking, etc, etc. And as the kayaker is going, we see the shark about to breach the water and eat him. But then we cut back to aquarium science dude, and he's visited by the mayor and his legal counsel. Yeah, because why would I want to see this fucking giant ass shark? And it looks fucking huge. It almost looks Meg size or like a baby Meg. It is insanely big and it would have been kind of a cool shot, but then, uh, I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm just, I'm mad. I'm a little bit mad right now. I'm thinking I know why I don't remember anything from this movie because nothing fucking happens in this movie. There's nothing worth fucking remembering. Oh, that should have been a telltale sign for me, but fucking hell. Yeah, so the mayor and the legal counsel lady are in this dude's uh, fucking office, science dude's office. And then the mayor asks if the coroner and game warden were there recently and if they know about this problem. And then tells a fishing story and the science dude reiterates that it's a shark in the lake and not something else. Like it's not fish or anything. It Like, it's a goddamn shark. And then Science Dude shows the mayor some video of a shark in a lake. And it looked like an actual video that they probably just, like, pulled from fucking YouTube or something. But we watch a good portion of this video, which was neat. But why the fuck am I watching footage of a real shark in a movie that's supposed to have this big badass shark? Like, why are we watching this whole goddamn thing? We don't need it. I don't need it. I don't want it. Didn't ask for it. Get it the fuck out of here. The mayor then basically gets to brass tactics and he threatens to cut funding if the scientist dude keeps like perpetuating that there's a shark in the lake and that maybe he should change his tune more or less. And then the mayor talks with his legal counsel and they talk about options and his lady legal counsel person suggests that they pin this whole thing on the game warden. Spencer and the mayor will look like a, uh, not, no, they're gonna, no, sorry. The mayor will look like a fucking hero, and Spencer is gonna get the whole blame for everything. Which makes no fucking sense. It's just, it's just absolutely insane. Like, everybody fucking knows there's so many witnesses to this. Like, they could probably actually just get the mayor arrested. They probably have enough evidence to do that. Or if they were smart enough to, like, just, like, put their phone on record in their pocket while they talk to him. It's not that fucking hard, people. The lawyer lady asks if there's anyone else who knows about this problem. And we immediately cut to the coroner lady getting into her car. And then the mayor just helps himself into the back seat and tells her not to worry. We're just two civil servants having a simple conversation. Yeah. And then gives some metaphorical speech or some shit. Um, long story short, keep quiet, bitch. That, that's the, that's the short of it. The coroner drives off after he leaves, and then she goes for a walk in the woods. She gets a phone call, and the person on the other end tells her to file her report, but to leave the cause of death blank. And we're done with that, apparently. That's it. Why the mayor couldn't have just said this in the backseat of the car instead of doing it on a phone call what I don't know why I'm trying to figure this out but well I mean if the movie's going to show it to me I need to fig figure out what the fuck is happening even though I don't care about any of this 
Oh, right. This is a fucking shark movie, guys. Holy shit. I forgot. I thought it was like a political uh, fucking thriller for a second. My bad. Then we cut to some kids jumping off a dock into the lake, some ducks swimming while the shark swims underneath them, and then there's a dog in the water. And so I'm like, okay, they're going to kill the fucking dog off, because of course this movie would do that just to piss me off even more. But we cut to this CGI underwater scene. The shark comes up, opens wide, and then we cut away. I don't even think we saw, like, the legs of the dog or anything. So it took me right out of it. So it didn't even really bother me because it was just so poorly fucking done. I don't even care that they suggested that the dog died because in my mind, it probably didn't because it just looked like nonsense. So yeah, okay. So as far as I'm concerned, nothing fucking happened there because you're not showing me anything. So nothing happened and everything's fine. That's what I'm going with. But seriously, how many fucking times are they going to pull this trick? Like, they've already done it a couple of times. We, we don't need this anymore. It, it works, like, once. You get one, and you've already used it up on the fucking kayak, dude. Where's the carnage? Where's the shark attack? I feel like, like this should just... This is called bull shark because they're just trying to tell a story about a bull shark and how they survive in lakes. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Holy fuck. Spencer meets the sheriff on a dock, and Spencer says it's a bull shark, and they need to close the lake. The sheriff says he's up for re-election, because of course we care about that, and they can't uh, let those fucking tourist dollars go away. Insert fucking Jaws uh, plot here, I guess. We also learn that there's uh, only one shark, not two, which I'm confused about. Spencer has said, like, yeah, no, there's only one shark, and it's just the baby, I guess. Or it's not, or it's just the mother. I don't know. I'm so fucking confused. I must have missed something where one of the sharks died, maybe? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know why Spencer now thinks there's only one shark. It, do it doesn't make any sense. Maybe he's just fucking drank so much that his brain cells are, like, completely fucked. I honestly don't know. The sheriff refuses to close the lake, so he tells Spencer to get a boat, and they're going to keep quiet about it, and they're going to go and kill it themselves, basically. Spencer leaves, and the sheriff is on the dock, and then the shark starts circling around the dock. Somehow. Don't think about it. And the sheriff fires his gun at the shark, with little or no effect, I guess. And the sheriff is knocked into the water, and he's attacked by a foam shark fin which I assume is supposed to be the real shark. Um, but I mean, just the shark has been completely CGI up until this point, and now all of a sudden we're using a practical fin effect. Like, did you shoot this movie in order, and like, this is where your budget ran out? Oh my god. But back to the point, uh, boring scene, no blood, just really fucking lame. The mayor comes into Spencer's office, and the mayor is just trying to deny everything and still talking in metaphors and riddles and tells Spencer to live up to his end of the deal, i.e. do his job and kill the shark, or he's going to get blamed for it, I think. Again, don't care. The mayor then says he'll put a statement out that there's work being done to the dam, so people need to stay out of the water so they can close the lake without closing the lake. That's all, like, we needed. You just needed to close it somehow. Fucking morons. Jesus Christ, this is so fucking stupid. This is so dumb. And then the mayor vaguely threatens Spencer's job if he doesn't kill this thing. So Spencer takes a boat out onto the lake, and he's searching for the shark. He stops and starts chumming the water. And then as Spencer is on his phone, the shark starts circling the boat. And we're back to rubber foam shark fins again. So, yeah, they ran out of money at this point, I suppose. Spencer fires his pistol at the shark and realizes he's late to do something with his son, so he goes back home. Like, I... Oh, my God. I know he's trying to make family a priority right now due to, like, all of his issues, but I don't know. Maybe a killer shark takes precedence right now. That's just my fucking opinion. I could be wrong, but I was just thinking to myself, 
that may be focusing on killing this shark that has already killed like three or four people apparently. Not that we've seen anything. And you're just like, oh man, I'm running late. Puh, better get out of here. And shooting it with a fucking pistol. W what was your... He's a game warden. Like, he should know... Oh, my God. Like, he should know what sort of weapons he needs to take out a wild animal. You can't just use anything on everything. Like, you... If you were to take that pistol and shoot, like, a fucking bear, it's gonna be like, wow, you made me very upset, I'm going to kill you. It's... I feel like this is kind of the same thing with the fucking pistol. He's gonna be like... The shark's gonna be like, oh, wow, you hit me, that's unfortunate, but now you're fucked. Oh, my God. It, nothing makes sense. Nothing makes any fucking sense. So, he meets his wife and son at the house, and then Dottie leaves giving Spencer, like, several death glares along the way. And then Spencer asks his son, Grant, if she's still mad, and he's like, yeah, you're screwed. So they have this, like, kind of funny little camaraderie here. And then he tells his kid to stay near the house this weekend and to keep out of the water and, like, make some promise. And then says, like, he's probably going to be at the house by himself because the dad has to work, and, of course, the kid's all upset or whatever. Ugh, oh, again, I don't fucking care about this family drama. It's just, I don't. I don't care about this family. I just really don't. Don't give a shit. Out on the lake, there's a couple fishing boats at sunset as the sharks lurk below. Uh, some people are out swimming. So basically, no one is taking this damn thing or lake closure seriously, is what I'm gathering. Uh, oh, maybe because they don't understand the full severity of the situation, Mr. Mayor. Fucking idiot. But no, no, that can't be it. Spencer checks on his son, who's now sleeping, and he takes his headphones off, and then he looks at the kid's laptop, um, and he sees the family photo as the background, and he's like, oh, well, it's so fucking cute. And then he tells Spencer he loves him, and then he goes to the kitchen and pounds back, like, a fucking 2-4 of beers as he's uh, reading up about sharks in, like, fucking children's books. Nothing happening makes any sense to me right now. Oh my, I love you, son, and I care about you, so I'm gonna go get fucking shit-faced. Like, could this not be, like, the turning point for him where he, like, starts to get better, and then he, like, researches the shark, and then he, like, successfully kills it? No, like, why would we do that? Let's, let's do this instead. Oh, God. Yeah, and, he, like, reading out of a children's book. Because it's not like it's this movie takes place in 2022, you know, part of the age of the fucking internet. Or anything like that. Spencer gets more and more shit-faced as the night goes on and can barely stand straight at one point. But the next morning, he's out on the water looking for sharks, somehow not hungover, but I guess probably because he's an alcoholic, so he's used to this shit. Anyways, he starts chumming the water, but it doesn't look like he has any more firepower than he did the time before. So I don't know what his plan is here. No idea. The rubber shark fin comes back, and Spencer shoots at it with his pistol, doing nothing, again. As Spencer is shooting, he gets a phone call from Gary, his sponsor, who tells him his son isn't at the house. So, I guess Spencer invited Gary over to, like, just spend time with his son, so his son wasn't by himself. And then he's like, oh, yeah, your kid's not here. And I guess he's by the lake somewhere. Because I guess they established earlier Grant really likes the water, so it would make sense that he's by the lake. Even though he promised his dad he wouldn't go in the water, but he's going to be a dumb kid and do the thing he promised that he wouldn't do. Shocking. Oh my god, what a fucking twist. Teenager acts like teenager. So Spencer panics and is like, oh man, I gotta go find him, I gotta go get him. Like, you know where the shark is. It's right there. Why don't you focus on doing that? And then if it goes away, then go and find out where your fucking kid is. Because at least now you know where the shark is. If you go away, it... Oh, my God. He's a game board, by the way. This is, like, his job. This is what he does. I'm just... This is, like, his... Fucking Christ, man. Fucking Jesus. He tries starting his boat, but it doesn't start... For reasons, so he decides to jump into the water, and the shark starts swimming around him, like, uh, dude, you know where the shark is. 
it was it was right there, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna jump in the water, and hopefully everything will be fine. <sighs> I got I got nothing. I got I have nothing. The kid's phone is buzzing, but he ignores it, and he starts walking into the water. I guess he's mad his dad was working all weekend, so now he's pouty. Spencer arrives at the house. I don't know how he escaped the shark. We don't establish that. It's just, oh, he was surrounded by the shark, we cut away, and now he's fucking home. I, I guess Spencer's magic. Spencer is a magic mother. Fucker, and that's that's what's happening. That's what we're gonna go with. I have nothing else to go off of here, so yeah, that's what we're going with. Anyways, Spencer goes outside and he yells for Grant to get out of the water, who has started walking in the water. So Grant takes his headphones off and he sees the shark. Spencer goes running into the water and brings uh, Grant back to shore while fighting off the rubber shark fin. Like, this shark does n apparently not much of a problem for the sheriff, and looks significantly fucking smaller than it has in any other scenes in this movie. Oh my god. So, Spencer gets Grant to shore, and Grant's leg is bleeding because he's stupid and doesn't listen. Later, he's sleeping, and Dottie and Spencer watch over him, and as they leave the room, Dottie gives Spencer shit for not telling her that there was a shark in the lake, and he says he told him to stay out of the lake, so the kid's a liar too. I mean, your kid's been attacked, maybe try not to pin it on him, uh, and maybe do better, because you are still an alcoholic piece of shit, so you don't really have a fucking leg to stand on at this point. Dottie then says something about this blowing up in his face, and it gives Spencer an idea. Cool. He goes to Nolan's with Dottie, and he tells Nolan he needs something that explodes, and he'll make his uh, part in this go away, basically, so he won't get in trouble. Nolan gives Spencer some C4, and Spencer asks, like, well, what do you want for it? And Nolan's like, well, you know what? Just keep the sheriff off my back. Great, not a fucking problem, Sheriff's dead. Easy peasy. Dottie and Spencer head out on the boat looking for the shark. The plan here is to get the shark to eat the C4 and then they'll shoot it and it'll explode. Not too fucking sure that's how that works, but you know, fuck it, why not? At this point, why not? After a while, the shark still hasn't shown up and... Fucking Spencer says he's going in, but Dottie beats him to it and says, make sure it's a clean shot. And then she manage, manages to toss the thermos, which has the C4 in it, into the shark's mouth. Spencer shoots it, and it explodes. We get a little bit of CG blood, and uh, that's about it. It's pretty anticlimactic, actually. Then we see Spencer packing up his office, and Rima says goodbye, and she's glad they're all getting a fresh start, and they're all back together, and oh my god, it's so happy. We pan over the lake, and we see an even bigger shark about to breach the water. This one is, like, definitely fucking Meg-sized. And then, roll credits. Oh. <laughs> you dumb bastards, eh? You thought that was it? Oh no, just wait, there is more. So, a little bit into the credits, Nolan is on his phone, walking through the woods, and he goes to the lake and starts fishing. As he's reeling in his line, he starts talking into a fucking tape recorder, like he's writing a book about this shark in the lake experience, I guess. And he keeps, like, re-saying the same thing over and over again, but just in, like, different ways. Like, wasn't this movie over? Like, I was done. I was fucking done. Like, what are we doing right now? His line gets stuck in the water, so he runs into the water, and then he sees a fin in the water. So he comes running back to shore, and then after nothing happens for God knows how long, it felt like fucking forever, he screams, and I guess he's eaten by the shark. Who fucking cares? I don't. I'm done with that. I'm done with this fucking movie. In case you couldn't tell, this movie sucked ass. I think I was pretty clear about all of the problems I had with this movie along the way. Uh, 
I, it was just hot fucking garbage. It was boring. There was so much fucking drama. This may as well have been, like, on fucking Hallmark or Lifetime. Maybe the CW. Like, just anywhere that there's just, like, way too much fucking drama, this should have been fucking on there. The poster looked like it could have had promise, maybe, but it's, it's nothing. This movie's nothing. It, it feels like they tried to make a low-budget movie look good, but not in any of the right ways. So you had, like, the rubber fin and the CGI mix, which didn't work for, for this movie. This isn't a Polony Brothers movie. The Polony Brothers pull that off because their movies look low-budget and it has that low-budget charm, which is why that shit sort of works. When your cinematography is this nice, you... Actually, the actors in this weren't bad. I actually didn't have too much of a problem with most of them. Except for maybe the mayor. He was a little bit fucking cheesy. He looked like he could have been somebody famous. I didn't look it up because honestly, I just did not fucking care. But other than that, like, yeah, the actors were fine. So when you try to mix in this, like, really bad CGI, then this, like, fucking shark fin, it just, it didn't feel like this movie had any charm to it. Like, they waste, they blew their load on CGI shark in the beginning. And then, like, the very end, I, I guess, for this meg size shark, I guess they, like, fucking drag the corners of the other shark to make it bigger, so now it's a bigger shark. whoop de fucking do And it makes no sense why Spencer tells us that there's only one shark in the lake. I feel like something got cut out, something was missed, I have no idea. What Like, what can I say? Half a star... You can definitely expect this movie to move on to C6 Cinema, uh, which by the time this comes out, I've probably talked about, but um, it's a side series of Bucket of Chum I'm doing that's It's just other episodes of the podcast, but I'm going to have guests on, and we're going to talk about movies that I've talked about in the past that are like particularly horrible. And this movie like is definitely going on that list. Because I, uh, it's going to be a while though, because I, I got to wait, I got I need some time before I have to watch this again. There's a couple of movies that I might have coming up for guest episodes that I have to rewatch, and I'm just not excited about it. Wow, what a fucking bummer of an episode, but <laughs> yeah, um, my recommendation is don't fucking watch this. If you see it on Tubi and you're like, oh, I wonder if, like, this would be a fun shark movie, no. No, just don't. Don't even put it on for background or anything. Nothing. Just see if you can, like, block it from view and just, like, never, ever see it again. Yeah, that, that's all I have. You guys know you can follow me on all social medias at Bucket of Chum Podcast. Go to the website, bucketofchumpodcast.com. You can find all the links for all my socials, all that sort of stuff. And if you want to support the podcast, you can go to patreon.com forward slash bucket of chum. $2 a month, you're a catch tier. New episode every month, newsletter, all that fun shit. But that's all I got. I'll see you guys next time for an all new episode of Bucket of Chum. <laughs> <laughs>